D&D, a game that has assembled countless adventuring parties, uniting them in common purpose. That is not the case with Crucible of Fate. In the Crucible, every contestant needs to keep their own survival in mind at all times, as only those that remain alive at the end will split a prize fund, starting with my donation of $1,000. Greetings. I'm David Carter. I'm the host and killer DM of Crucible of Fate, a competitive and high stakes D&D game open to all of you. I love D&D. The collaborative storytelling, the cinematic action of combat, the drama that comes with the decisions and dice rolls of the players. I love it all. As a DM in my games at home, I put a lot of time and effort into ensuring that my player characters' backstories are incorporated into my story arc so that they feel connected to the world and also feel like they're a part of generating the story. As my fellow DMs can attest to, there's nothing to be gained from an adversarial relationship between players and DMs, and only an immature DM would take any sort of enjoyment out of the untimely or unnecessary death of a player character. With Crucible of Fate, however, it's an entirely different animal. Half the contestants are going to have to die in every episode. Think of Crucible of Fate as a mixture of Squid Game and Survivor and The Hunger Games all mashed together under a 5th edition D&D rule set. The Crucible takes place in a horrific sandbox of persistent competition zones that are all housed within an abyssal demiplane within my homebrew world setting. In the initial stages of Crucible of Fate, death will come brutally and swiftly to many contestants. In fact, they'll be horribly outmatched and overpowered. Winning will be an impossibility. The only objective that the contestants should have initially is simply to survive. The Crucible is not meant to be fair in the beginning. In fact, it's going to be a total slaughter. But because the competition zones persist, contestants can learn from the mistakes of other contestants and by way of levels gained treasure acquired, items purchased, and just generally becoming more powerful, they can begin to turn the tide. And rather than being the hapless victims of fate, they can begin to manifest their own destiny. As the host and killer DM, I'm there to ensure that all of the contestants are treated fairly within the rules and that no favor is applied to any with the courage to enter this competition. That being said, the majority of contestants are going to die in the Crucible. The contestants are there in a gladiatorial setting to entertain the denizens of the Abyss, for their souls have all become forfeit. The first season of Crucible of Fate will be open to 120 contestants assembled from this open invitation to all of you. With half the contestants dying in each episode, this means by the end of round one, we will have reduced the pool from 120 contestants down to 60. By the beginning of round three, down to 30. Round four, 12. And then finally in round five, only six contestants will remain. For a game to conclude, it's important to note that a contestant must die. But this is not just a simple battle royale. Contestants will compete against powerful creatures, deadly puzzles, and in some cases, will engage in mortal combat with one another. The survivors of each game will return here to the Fate's Hand Tavern. They will all gain a level, spend any of the treasure that they have earned throughout the previous game, perhaps take a short rest, or even parlay with one another to strategize. Surviving each of the three games means that a contestant will gain three levels and proceed to the next round. Every zone also contains a clue that reveals a mechanical aspect to my in-game persona, the host. This will help any contestants that wish to strategize and formulate a plan of attack should they be foolhardy enough to challenge such a powerful entity. As a gift from your most gracious host, each contestant will be provided with six Fate Spheres, a very rare and very powerful homebrew artifact that will allow you to manipulate the roles of the host and also of your fellow contestants. A truly powerful artifact indeed. Anyone can apply to compete in the Crucible. 
All you have to do is make a level three character and write up a one to two page backstory. Send both of those to me at highstakesdnd at gmail.com. Between episodes, the submissions will be reviewed and six contestants will be selected to appear on the next episode of The Crucible. Be sure to build a character that you will find fun to play and will work with your strategy. Playing to your character's strengths will be key and if you find yourself doing something outside the scope of your build, you're likely going to fail. And in the crucible of fate, failure means death. Although formal alignment is less prominent in modern D&D, it will be extremely important in the crucible of fate. Your character's in-game behavior could profoundly affect your alignment, which means that you may not be able to use some of the alignment-restricted artifacts, some of which are extremely powerful. So be careful to behave as your character is intended to. Role playing and not metagaming will also be very important. You don't want to abuse information that you as a player know that your character would not have been privy to. As an audience member, you'll have the ability to influence the game as it unfolds. In between each episode, you'll be able to vote on the contestant that you think role played the best or metagame the least. Between each episode, the contestant with the most votes for best role player or least metagamer will receive an additional fate sphere that they'll be able to use in any future episode of The Crucible. So, what role will you play? Perhaps you could be a protective paladin, shining in the dark as an example to all those around them or a rogue lurking in the shadows waiting for an opportune time to strike. Maybe you want to be a master manipulator using your charisma to influence and control all those around you. Or you could be a raging barbarian simply cutting down all those that stand in your path. The choice is yours. Victory, death, success or failure are just a roll away. For this is high stakes D&D.